Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to solve this equation. So you kind of have to look closely here, but here is this variable x, and we want to solve this equation for x. But the best part about this problem is we're not going to use our calculator. Now, of course, I can't control whether in fact you use a calculator or not. But just imagine if you were sitting uh, uh, for a test or quiz and your teacher said, no calculator, uh, can you do this problem? Is it achievable? Well, I'm here to tell you that this is actually quite easy to do without your calculator. Of course, you need to have some basic arithmetic skills and understand percents and decimals, but this is not that difficult. But uh, if you can solve this equation for x, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to show you exactly how easy it is to solve this equation without the aid of a calculator. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the answer. Again, this is an equation we're solving for x. What is x equal to? Well, x is equal to 24. Okay, so, you know, we ended up with a nice whole number here. And some of you might, you know, look at this. You're like, well, there's 14%. I got a decimal. Maybe you're kind of anticipating a more complicated looking answer, like something with decimals or fractions. But uh, one thing in math, when you go to solve an equation, and it doesn't make a difference how complicated an equation is, you just never know what the answer is going to look like. Oftentimes, the answer can be a nice uh, no integer value like negative 2, right? And it could be some crazy equation. So you kind of have to trust your instincts. You know, when you do get your answer, if you, you know, if you follow the correct process, then you need to be confident in your answer. But if you got this correct, that is fantastic. And for those of you that, uh, you know, were able to solve this problem with your calculator, I'll still give you a happy face. But if you actually do this without your calculator, you get the A plus 100% and multiple stars. So you could tell your friends and family that you know a thing or two about uh, arithmetic, okay, and basic algebra, because that is what we are talking about in this particular problem. All right, let's get into it right now. So here is the equation. We have 14% of 0.25x is equal to 14% of 6. Now, let's just notice something here, okay? I'm, of course, I already kind of wrote out the solution, but this right here, 14% of 0.25, this is just some sort of numeric value. 14% of 6 is some sort of numeric value. Obviously, if we had our calculator, you could calculate it, but let's just kind of go up here and kind of set this up so you can kind of see the big picture here, right? So we have all this complicated stuff, 14% of uh, 0.25, but this is a, just a number, okay? All this is a number, and it's a number times x. Nothing you know, very similar to, like, let's say 2x is equal to another number, okay? Another value, all right? So let's say, like, 2x is equal to 10. So how would I solve for x? Well, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation uh, for this particular equation by 2. Now here, if I wanted to uh, solve for x, I simply have to divide both sides of the equation by this particular number value, right? So whatever this is, if we divide both sides of the equation by that, we will solve for x. So you always want to keep the big picture in mind. And here, again, if this is kind of confusing uh, to you, you know, uh, that's why a great thing to do when you're kind of confused on what to, what to do, especially with equations or in algebra, is to try to find a, uh, an easier um, example of what's going on, all right? So basically, this is a basic linear equation. If you're like, okay, let me just look at a basic example, put some easier values in there, think about what the steps are, and then just kind of extrapolate that to what's going on here. Okay, but in this particular problem, we're dealing with percent. We got 14% and 14% right here, okay? So some of you might feel compelled to be like, well, it's the same thing. Can I just cross cancel these guys right there. Well, in fact, you kind of can do that, okay? But let's suppose you weren't sure that you could do that. Remember, uh, we need to think about how we can convert percent into an actual value, okay? Something that we can work with, i.e. like a decimal or a fraction. 
So 14% is equal to the decimal 0.14, okay? So uh, it's just easier to convert 8% to a decimal. And how do we do that? It's pretty simple. All we have to do is move the decimal point over two places to the left, which is the same thing as divided by 100. So if you're looking at 14%, you're like, hey, where's the decimal point? Well, the decimal point is always after the number. If I said uh, five, where's the decimal point on five? We'll just think 5.0. That's the location of the decimal point. So 14.0%, 14% uh, you know, is the same thing as 14.0%. So you just move that decimal point over two places to the left, you got 0.14. So 14% is equal to 0.14. So anyways, hopefully you know this. And again, it's just basic concepts, basic percent skills. All right, so the, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, rewrite this problem. I'm going to take out these 14% and put in a 0.14. So now we're just dealing with all numbers here. Okay, so here I have 0.14 times 0.25x is equal to 0.14 times 6. Now you can see my next move is I am indeed going to cross cancel these 0.14s, but let's look at an easier example of why I can do that, okay? Well, let's suppose you had uh, 6x is equal to 12, all right? So 6x is equal to 12, but if I had two times 3x is equal to two times six. So basically I'm rewriting this equation uh, it's the same equation. 6x is the same thing as 2 times 3x, and 12 is the same thing as 2 times 6. So here, I have like factors, okay? So in algebra, this is these are factors right here. It's all multiplication. These are factors right here. When you have like factors amongst um, both sides of the equation, you can just simplify it like so. You can actually just cross-cancel those uh, factors and you have 3x is equal to 6 and of course we would solve that equation 3x is equal to 6 uh, by dividing both sides of the equation by 3 so x is equal to 2. Okay now of course uh, here you normally you would just divide both sides of the equation by 6 but I'm just highlighting here when you do have common factors uh, and again a factor all right in other words that's being uh, separate operation here is multiplication you can just simply cross cancel those so in this case I got 0.14 times 0.25 times x is equal to 0.14 times 6. These are all factors of this uh, of these uh, respective products. So I can simply just cross cancel that, and that uh, gives me now 0.25 x is equal to 6. All right. So now what do we do? Well, um, at this point, uh, instead of working with decimals, I'm going to elect to work with fractions okay now if some of you did this problem without the aid of a calculator but took a different path and still got it right that's fantastic as long as you had the arithmetic skills uh to figure this out that's what counts okay but you always want to work the most effectively most efficiently as you can so here my next move is i am going to rewrite the decimal 0.25 as the fraction one fourth now, there are some uh, com very common decimal values that you should just know the fractional equivalent, like 0.5 is one half. Hopefully you know that. 0.25, of course, is one fourth. Uh, 0.75 is three fourths. There are some others, but these are some basic decimal and fraction equivalent that you just kind of should just know, you know, by kind of a, a rote memory, right? You don't need a calculator. But let's suppose you forgot this. You're like, okay, 0.25. How can I write that as a fraction? Well, this is what? Well, this is the tenths place. This is the hundredths place. So 0.25 is the same thing as 25 hundredths. And you can reduce that fraction down to one fourth. All right. So this is how you can write um, any decimal as a fraction. It's just basically, uh, you know, uh, say the decimal using the place value and then reduce uh, that fraction if possible. And then you'll have the respective fraction for that decimal. Now, if some of you out there are like, boy, I knew this one time, but I totally forgot all this stuff. Well, if you're getting back into mathematics, you've got to definitely upgrade your arithmetic skills. I have a fantastic um, a math course that can really help you out. It's a little mini course. It's called my Math Foundations course. Uh, it's just a three chapter course, but I go over all about the, all the stuff you forgot in elementary school and middle school in terms of decimals, place values, fractions, percent, 
order of operations. That's super, super important, especially if you plan on taking more advanced math like algebra. That is your foundation. If you had a home, for example, and here's my little uh, picture, little sketch of a house. There's my house. This is my foundation, right, of my house. Now, in mathematics, your foundation is arithmetic, okay? All this stuff that, you know, you learn at elementary school, middle school, and then when you get, like, you know, into high school and college, you're like, yeah, I don't need that math. It's all basic math. I don't need that. Well, that is, in fact, your foundation. Now, if you have a shaky foundation, if you didn't learn this stuff too well, you're trying to learn all this, like, advanced math on top of this. This is going to, you're, you're not going to do well, okay? So you got to definitely respect all those basic math skills. And if you don't use them, we tend to forget them. So anyways, if you need a refresher on it, that is a uh, great little course that can help you out. All right, so let's continue on. So 0.25x is equal to 6. Again, 0.25 is equivalent to the fraction 1 fourth. Uh, so we have 1 fourth x is equal to 6. So now this is super easy, assuming you know some basic algebra. So what's the objective here? Well, the objective is to uh, solve for x. In other words, get x by itself on uh, the left-hand side of the equation. Now, we write this as x, but really the coefficient, the number in front of this x is 1. Okay, this is 1x. But here, I have a 1 fourth x. So how can I get a 1 fourth? How can I turn a 1 fourth into a 1? Well, it's very, very easy. Anytime you have a fraction in front of a variable like this and you're trying to solve for the variable, all we need to do is flip this uh, fraction upside down. So 1 over 4 uh, is going to be 4 over 1. Okay, so if I said write 4 as a fraction, you'd be like, well, uh, it's just a number. It's not a fraction. Well, you could always put it over 1, and now you just turn it over. Uh, you just make that number. You think of it now as a fraction where it has a numerator and denominator. Okay, so this is how you solve equations when you have a fractional coefficient. Just multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be 4. But if I'm going to multiply 4 by this side, I have to multiply 4 by this side. Now, again, just to be super clear about this, when we multiply 4 by 1 fourth, what happens? Well, you got 4 times 1, of course, is 4, over 1 times 4, 4 divided, 4 divided by 4 is 1, and that's what we, uh, what we want, 1 or 1x, okay? All right, so again, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 4. 6 times 4 is 24. Okay, so that's basically how you solve that. But let's suppose you got this answer. Like, you know, I'm just not sure, uh, you know, that is the right answer. Well, you can always check uh, your solution to any equation by just plugging in uh, for the variable. So if x is equal to 24, let's replace this x with a 24 and see how the, if the equation balances, i.e. if the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So let's go take a look at that right now. So I want to replace this x with a 24, which I believe is the uh, correct solution. So now, you know, even if you had a calculator, you're like, okay, 0 0.25 times 24. If you uh, wanted to use a calculator, you're going to see that's going to be equal to 6. Okay? Or if you're like, 0.25 is the same thing as 1 fourth. 1 fourth of 24 is 6. Either way, at this point, look at what we have. Okay? You're left with 14% okay, of, of course, 0 0.25 times 24 is 6 is equal to what's over here, 14% of 6. You don't even need, uh, need to do the math because you can see uh, these uh, are the exact same values, right? 14% of 6. Is 14% of 6 equal to 14% of 6? Yes, indeed, they are the same thing. So uh, this number value that creates this situation is a valid solution. Okay, so hopefully this was a good little review for some of you out there. And uh, more importantly, I hope to have uh, inspired some of you that are kind of getting back into math to really double down on your arithmetic skills, okay? Um, never just assume that, um, oh, yeah, I'll get use my calculator. I don't want to do it. I know it's kind of arduous to, um, you know, get a piece of paper and pencil and do a bunch of basic math. You know, I remember back in the 1970s, I didn't see a calculator until the 80s, uh, but I do remember doing a ton of just elbow grease math, just writing with my pencil on my paper, da, 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 very sloppy, <laughs> having my teachers uh, be neat, be neat, be neat, you know, all that kind of good stuff. So you have your uh, teachers out there to thank, um, you know, in elementary school, middle school, all your teachers, as a matter of fact. But if you really think back about it, you know, or think about it, 
Who taught you how to divide numbers? Who taught you to multiply numbers? Some teacher did, right? So I'll tell you something. I appreciate my teachers. And one thing I kind of regret is I uh, wish I would have um, remembered their names or uh, some of their names. I kind of remember a few of their names. But uh, anyways, all those teachers that helped me out through the years, you know, I definitely uh, appreciate. And hopefully you appreciate this little video as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.